We've completed three of the four items on our to-do list. We've set up our game states, we have text and titles, we are keeping track of wins and losses, we've even refactored some code to make it more efficient. There's still more we could do, but we're off to a good start on that. Final item is to work on countdown timers. As we're putting the timer object into our project for our countdown timer, we already have the timer class. So I'm going to say timer. And when I look at my timer class, we can see it's class timer. And re remembering that the timer has a complete method, we also, when we construct a new timer, we pass to it what interval we want the timer to run on. So with this, I'm going to create my timer. This will be a count down timer. And the next thing that I want to set up with my countdown timer is going to be my time left value. The time left is how much time is left on it because with the countdown timer, we're not counting at zero working our way up, but we're starting at a number and counting our way down. So that's how we will use our time left value. So our timer, we're going to set up this timer so it fires off every second that we have the timer running. When the timer reaches zero, then we will be changing our game state from play to lose because we took too long to do something. So with that, we'll probably set up our time left at a pretty small number so that we don't have to wait too long while it's going on. So with this, countdown timer is going to be equal to a new timer and now the value that we pass in if we were wanting to count in something other than whole seconds for it we could set up a variable to keep track of our interval we're using in this case 1000 milliseconds is one second and that's how frequently we want the timer to ping off while we are using it the next thing that I will set up is my time left and I will set this up with five. Once we prove it works at five, we'll probably lower it down to three while we're finishing tweaking it, just so we don't have to wait so long for things to happen. So we have a timer. We have time left, it's gonna start out at five. Now, What we can do with this is we could write up a little function that would be show time and then we could within that we could set the text, we could set the location, the color and do all of that. Uh, and that would be a good way to go about doing that. But first we need to kind of figure out the logic of where we want to do this and how we want to set things up inside the project. So currently my countdown timer is instantiated. So I have an instance of the timer time left is now set to 5. So what I want to have happen is when I change my game state from play or I mean from start because we're in start game when I change that game state to play I want my timer to start. So I want that countdown timer to start as part of that. So to accomplish that countdown timer dot start so we can call the countdown timer start method and that's going to start the timer now we've set the game state to play the timer is running so that now means we're inside of play game and this is where we need to show the time to the player on screen and then keep track of the time so that if we have zeroed out our time, we want the game to be over. To accomplish this, we need to show our timer, show our countdown. Let's move that up so we have a little more room to work here. So putting the timer on screen, this is where we get to display that information and I'll just set up a string s is going to be equal to time left colon plus time left 
So we're now setting it up equal to that value and do a text align left. That's our text size, not font size. And just do a font size of 12. Fill. We'll put it in red because, well, it's kind of you know important to know how much time is left. And then finally finish up with a text S. And we can draw it in that top left corner where we're, I'll drop it down though a little further. So it's in that top 20 in from the margin and now it puts that over on screen. Oh, but our text align, forgot that's a constant and needs to be in all caps. That's why it was underlined in red. So this will now show time left here. Now time left isn't modifying itself, it's just set up. If I run this, um, we're missing a little something somewhere. So when I called draw replay button here, I used a colon and a semicolon, so then it was freaking out on that little thing under win game. So I had it correct on lose game, but win game, after I put it in, I never reran the program to verify it was broken. All right, so wins and losses, click. Now we can see there's time left, but it's not doing anything. So we are showing the time on screen, but we're not doing anything with it yet. So this is where we get to start working with the timer. And this will be inside of play game. And once we get all of this inside of play game, we may decide that all this timer stuff would make sense to put into its own method so we can just call it so it's not getting so long and ugly in here. But we'll worry about that in a little bit. So this will be our countdown logic. So to work with the timer, we remember how it works. We ask our countdown timer dot complete. So we're asking the timer, are you done yet? And when that timer is done, we want something to happen. And what we want to do is say, if my time left is still greater than 1, so if my time left is greater than 1, then we will take 1 away from time left. And then we tell the timer to start up again. So our timer's configured that the timer runs for a specific interval. When it's completed that interval, we tell it to begin again in a perpetual running situation. In this case, because we want it to stop after a fixed amount, then we can um, check. We do that check to find out, is there still time left? And if so, then we tell it to start. Now, if I run it again, Now we can see the timer's going and it says, hey, if the timer is greater than one, okay, and then I won, then we went over to the edge. But let's try it. There's going to be another interesting thing that happens here. So we let the timer, it's at one. Now the timer stopped. Now I win the game, play again. You see that the timer is still at one. So after I win the game, so that's something we're going to have to figure out. But I want, if my time left is not greater than 1, then what I want to have happen is I want my game state to be set equal to lose. Because you are a loser if you run out of time. If you can't move your mouse across the screen to within the edges in 5 seconds, you deserve to lose. So if we run this, 
We let it count down. And now I lost. And now if I try and play again, oh wait, I can't play anymore because my timer is perpetually stuck. So adding down at the bottom on your uh, supplied code was a method called reset game. So if we're going to reset game and say time left is equal to five, now if I run the game and lose, oh I lost, okay. Now let me try again. Oh wait, I'm still losing. Because while I've set the value inside my reset game function, I have never called and said reset it. So what we can do if we look inside our button, our button when it changes our game state to play, we can call reset game. Now what we may find is in a more complex game we have much more than just a simple timer value we have to reset. We may have to reset a score. We may have to reset the active objects in a game. So in the catcher game where we have active drops, as that number goes up and up and up and up and up, when we reset the game to play again, if we don't reset active drops back down to zero, our catcher game means all the objects are going to be falling on top of us during any replay value. Now, if put this in and feel fairly confident that's going to work, but I do have something that I don't like right now, which is I've hard-coded this value, time left is equal to 5. I want to set it to a value called max time because then I'm going to create a variable for that. And before I set time left, I will say max time is equal to 5. And then time left is max time. And the reason I'm doing that is if I want to change how long my game runs from five seconds down to three, because when we're doing this testing, five is growing increasingly annoying to wait. If I just change this down to three, I can still prove to myself that it's working, but I only have to change that number in one spot. Three, two, one, bonk, I lost. Play again. Two, one, bonk, I lost, okay. So we can see where We're getting there, and our pieces are starting to fall into place as part of this. Uh, there's a little glitch with the timer that we need to tell it to start because otherwise with max time, we reset the max time, in this case to three, and then when play game happens, then it waits for the timer to be complete. So now it we need to tell the timer to restart as part of restarting the game. Otherwise, we end up our game count is off by a second. So now when we run it, we'll see three, two, one, done. Play three, two. So now it's always showing and displaying the correct amount. So we do need to retell as part of our reset to tell that to happen. Now it's also possible as part of the reset is we can just put this line of code here, game state equals play, inside of our reset as part of all of our reset activities. Uh, it's not crucial or critical on doing it, but it is something that could make things a little bit cleaner that way. So now we have a basic game state a lot, of a lot of code here just for finding out has someone moved their mouse left or right on screen. But if they don't do it within a certain window of time, they lose. 
and we're now drawing and constructing buttons on screen and checking to see has the user clicked into those. We are keeping track of wins and losses. So we have quite a bit of complexity into what is otherwise a very simple kind of activity. But now you can extend this and go much further and really utilize this system of organizing your program into a series of states and each state is just going to call that function to do the things you want to have happen for that particular state. So we have start, play, win, lose as our different states that we are working with here. And if you utilize that, you can create extremely complex, highly interactive, and engaging projects.